Hey guys, what's up? In our last video, we talked about how we can import or embed cue points into our audio files. Uh, specifically, we were working on Logic Pro X. But now we've got the audio in, we've got the cue points, we've ran the log and we can see where the, the file does indeed have cue points, but what can we do with those after? Now, uh, if you look at the wave player inside of Unreal Engine, so I'm in Unreal Engine 5.11, okay? So uh, if you're in a different version, this might look a little different. So if, you, if you've open up your file and you've got, we've got pulling strings here from our last video. If you haven't seen that, you can go back and watch that. But it sounds like this. Doesn't it? Oh, okay, yeah. There we go. It sounds like this. Okay. And we know on our uh, output log, it's showing us where the cues are. These are cue points that we imported. Now, it's cool because it's cool because you can use these cue points now to trigger other things. So like maybe when the song gets to cue point five, you can trigger something else, maybe another layer or something, which is great. But what about if we wanna use those triggers in the song itself to tell that song where to go? Um, and as you can see, there's cue points on the outputs, but there's no cue points in here. So how could we, and you can't just take a cue point out. If you take a cue point out and bring it into here, it won't let you because, uh, it's, it, you can't do that. And, uh, but what, what you can do is we can use the information of those cue points to then control the wave player. And let me, let me show you how we're going to do that. Okay. So. We're in Unreal Engine. We've got our meta queue set up from our last session. And uh, none of this really matters because we're not doing anything inside the game at this point. We're just focusing on the meta sound. So here's what I figured out. Uh, since there's no real way to just take a cue point out and trigger it in, what we can do is just think about what's happening here. So we've inputted these cue points in the audio file and they're happening at specific points in time. If we knew where those specific points in time were, then essentially we could manipulate the audio file based on those points. Now, when we print the output log, it tells us where what's happening on the cue points, but it doesn't tell us where they're happening inside the file. Here's how we're gonna figure that out. Okay, so we are going to now use the output log to tell us not just what cue points are happening, but where exactly they're happening. And if you see this little node here, playback location, returns the absolute position of the wave playback, wave playback as a ratio of wave duration from zero to one. Now it's not zero to 100, that'd be convenient because this is 100%. So what it's doing, it's zero to one. So it's taking the entire length of the wave and it's setting the beginning at zero and the end at one. And based on that, those cue points are happening on some sort of really decimal float throughout. And we're gonna find out exactly where those are. So we're gonna uh, pull off the playback location. We're gonna go print log float, okay? We're gonna trigger this on every cue point and just uh, we'll label it. We'll label it where the, the cue point is. Okay, so now when we hit play, there we go. We're cheating the system now, kind of. So you can see what's happening here. When it hits a cue point now, instead of just finding out that it's the intro cue point, the second cue point, it's telling us exactly where it's happening. Now, this number is very small, 0 .000108. So for example, cue point three, which is A, is happening at 0 0.064624. Now, that number represents the percentage of the entire wavelength. So basically what that's telling us at is that for this pulling strings cue, at 0 0.064624 is where the first cue point, well, it's actually the second cue point labeled A is. So now, how do we use that information? Well, um, for one, we know that if we listen to this, So A3 is exactly four bars. 
So with that information, we know if we wanted to loop this four bars, we could actually loop this amount of time. That is exactly four bars. And this is actually the same way really that the BPM to seconds converter works. It takes the BPM, divides it by 60, and then does this math. That's how many beats are happening per second. So we're kind of doing that, but we don't need to know the tempo of the song. So what we're doing here now is we are going to pull off a get wave duration. Okay, of pulling strings Q10, which is what we're using in this Waves player. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to use this number here, but we can't just use that number because if we use just that number, we could just put it here in start time. But the problem with that number is that's not the actual number. That is a percentage of the total number. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull in a wave duration get wave duration because we want to find out exactly how long pulling cues is pulling <laughs> pulling strings cues so this is going to now give us a duration so if we took this duration out and we hit it at the start time we're not going to hear anything because basically it's it's taking the entire duration and it's starting it there which is the end of the song so if we did a multiplier here and we multiplied this out can't type today. And then we use that as the start time. If we set this at zero, it's going to multiply the total duration which by zero, which is zero, which tells us zero, which is actually the start of the song. So now we're at zero. If we put 0.5 here, that would start the song at exactly the halfway point. If we started this at 0.75, this would start it exactly three quarters of the way through. If we started this, you get the idea, but if you started this at 0.99, that's pretty much the ending. We don't even hear the tail. Let's go 0 0.90. So it's almost the end. Now, what does this have to do with cue points? Well, here's what it has to do with cue points. So now we can actually go in here and we can find where these cue points are. So we know, okay, hey, the uh, riser out starts at 0 0.919462 of the total length. So we can multiply this wave duration by that amount of time. And what we get is this file starting at that Q point. How cool is that? Let's say we want to start at the stinger. Here's where the stinger starts. So if I wanted to take this and I wanted to start this at the stinger, I could just push, put that time in here. And then now it's going to start at the stinger. How cool is that? So we literally just use the Q point of the audio that we're playing to direct the wave player to start playing at that cue point in that actual song. So this is powerful if you think about it because now what we can do is we can start the track wherever we want. We could start it at the beginning, but then we can use the loop section. We could loop this, and but then we could set the loop point. Maybe we only want to loop the end of it. So we want to start the whole song, but then just loop from cue point uh, D to Q point stinger. And so we could loop that over and over and over. So this opens up a whole new world of possibilities. And what's cool about this is we also know how long four bars are because remember the distance between the beginning and this first marker, where was it? It was right here. This is exactly four bars. So we could also multiply that. We could add another multiplier and just mul use that as a length. We could multiply that by 10, now we're getting 40 bars. Or we could mul multiply that by four, and now we're just 16 bars. So we can set that loop length to 16 bars, and it would, op it would, it would do that throughout um, the course of the meta queue. So this is a really powerful feature. Took me a while to figure this out. There might be an easier way to do it. I don't know about it. I couldn't find it in the documentation. If you know of an easier way, please put it in the comment sections. But you can see how this opens up a whole world of now what you're able to do with cue points 
based on some fairly simple math. So hope this video helps and we'll see you in the next video.